pastor to come and to preach God's word to us. Let's pray together. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we pray for our pastor today, Lord. Anoint him that he'll speak your words to us. God, touch our hearts that we'll hear what you have for us, that we might leave this place transformed by the power of your Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, Pastor. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord good. Clap your hands to Jesus. Praise the Lord. Come on, preach it. Huh? You will hear better preaching than what we've already heard. You just you search <coughs> church the world around. You won't you won't find better stuff. Uh -huh. Man, I'd, I'd rather I'd rather be an old time Christian. Than anything I, I I just I don't know. That's just I, I just me. I just rather I'd rather be right here than the best jail in Tipton County. I'm gonna take it. Skip, good to see you, man. You and your wife. God bless you. Thank you for coming today. Praise the Lord. Good friend tonight. Friend tonight. Amen. I, I just, good to see everyone here today. Amen. My, my. Are y'all glad to see me? Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, God's so good. Sister Creasy, thank you for the Word of God this morning. Let's go to the book of Revelation, chapter 1. And the youth part now, just in a, after I preach here a few minutes, they're going to give you a little skit here. So please, nobody leave if you... Unless you just have to. And then, and then they're going to take the kids outside and have a good time with them hunting eggs and throwing candy and, and everything. But uh, let's hear just a little bit more of the Word of God. Is that okay? Yeah. Revelation 1 and verse 18. I am he that liveth. Jesus speaks to us and, and was dead. And behold, I'm alive forevermore. Oh, I like that word right there. I'm alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. There ain't nothing the devil can do about it. There's nothing the government can do about it. They can change Congress. They can change all the rules and which they do to suit themselves. But they never will change the Word of God. It's quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces to the dividing of sunder of soul, spirit, and the mind. And it discerns the thought and the intent of the heart. I want to preach just a minute or two. Now, I won't be long. Death is defeated. Death is defeated. Lift your hands and thank the Lord today. Hallelujah. We love you this morning, God. Lord, we lift you up, Jesus. We lift you up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we lift you up today. God, we bless your name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we exalt you, Lord. Lord, we lift you up. Hallelujah. We lift you up. You're the one to be praised today, Lord. It's not us. It's not our church. It's not our organization, God. We lift you up. We lift you up. You're the one, Lord. You're the one. Thank you, Lord. Bless your children today. Bless this message and messenger. In the name of Jesus. Everybody say amen. Thank you for standing. Be seated. Praise the Lord. God is so good. You can see you uh, drive by different places of businesses. You drive by a clothing store or something of that nature. You might see a sign on the window that says something like, since such and such. Say, it might be, say it's a Sears store. And there may be a sign in the window that reads something like, uh, since 1900 and I don't know if that's got any bearing on the sense for Sears or not but uh, you just assume when you read that sign that that store has been there since 1900 and that it's, it's still in operation today it's still in business and it's got a good name that it's been there since 1900 
And it's, uh, or sometimes you'll see a sign that says out of business. You know, we see a lot of them lately. Out of business. Moved to Cairo. Not in business anymore. All kinds of stuff. But I've never, ever, in my short, little short lifespan, I never ever saw a sign at the gate of a cemetery that said out of business for lack of business. Everybody quit coming. So we had to close the gates. Never saw that in my lifetime. <clears throat> out of business. Sorry. No more business. Can't come in here. In other words, when you go in, drive up to a cemetery or to around it or whatever you do, there's always, it's, it's by you seeing a sign that says, that doesn't, you don't see a sign that says we're out of business. It just lets you know that there's plenty of room for one more. Are you understanding? Plenty of room. There's always room for one more. If you walk around in that cemetery, you know, a lot of people do that. They have different cemeteries. Uh, maybe not all, but many of them have what they call decoration signs. The families that have people in those cemeteries, they go and they decorate those cemeteries, they, their, their graves. And that, that's okay, that's good. And as you're walking around in those cemeteries, in some of them you see two tombstones. And if you go to one that, we, I know one particularly where my wife's mom is buried, uh, they've got them that goes all the way back to the Civil War. And... Uh, you see names and, and dates. Dates when they were born and dates when they were buried or when they died. And you can even see some that says died young. Maybe just an infant, just a child. But they're there in that cemetery. You see all kinds of markers that uh, marks people's graves. Mark where they're buried. And by seeing all of that and, and you driving, we got some cemeteries there in Covington. That's old cemeteries. Yeah. Huh. And uh, you see these and you know that by, by knowing what you're looking at, you see that death comes to everyone. They go all the way back to the Civil War, as I said, and they, come, and, and they go all the way forward to just a child, just a baby. Death is no respecter of person, so death comes to all. We're all a dead sentence generation. We're living in a generation that is sentenced to die. Living in a dying world. When we were born into this world, we were born to die. If the rapture doesn't take place, we will all visit those cemeteries are one of them one day if the Lord doesn't, doesn't come back. There will always be in our newspaper in the Covington leader there until the end of time, until everything's gone and finished, there will always be an obituary column. It will always be there. Just pray your name's not in it. There will always be there. There will always be a funeral somewhere at some time. Many times it's older people like myself that got old and spent their days. But sometimes there's teenagers. I've done many services for teenagers that once lived for God that when they got out from under mom or dad they kind of went their own way and started doing their own thing. Started drinking their booze and driving. I, I came up Holly Grove this morning at about 15 minutes to 6. I came up to change the cross from, uh, from the purple to the white cloth. And as I was coming, I saw some red lights and blue lights and it looked like the place was on fire right down between my house and the church. 
And as I got closer, I saw a pickup truck that had ran off the road and, and it hit a tree and just totally just sheared it right off. And, and then I was talking to the, uh, to the record driver and he said, uh, said they, was, they was drunk under the influence. I don't know what happened to the young man that was driving, but death comes to all of us. I hope somebody's listening to me today. And if you read your Bible, you'll confirm, you'll, you'll find the Bible confirms that. The Word of God teaches us from the book of Hebrews 9.27 and as is it appointed unto man once to die. You don't have to be old and gray-headed. You don't, you don't have to be ill. You don't have to have cancer. You don't have to have some kind of disease that's going to take you out. Death just comes to everybody. It's appointed unto man once to die, but then after the death is the judgment. These are appointments. Job said it himself in 30 and 23, for I know that thou will bring me to death and to the house appointed for all living. So we're all going to face death one day. Every backslider, every sinner, every saint, every young person, every old person, we're going to stand and we're going to face death one day. The psalmist said in 89 and 48, What man is he that liveth and shall not see death? Everyone will see death one day for the, the Roman writer said in 1623, For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Thank God for the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Thank God for the first Easter morning when the sun woke up the earth. Thank God that our Savior came out and had the keys of death, hell, and the grave. No longer do we have to fear death. No longer do we have to worry. You don't have to worry about dying, honey. You're going to die. It ain't a question of are we going to die. It's a question of when are we going to die. And I'll tell you something else. The next question is, what are you going to find on the other side? Right. Yeah. When you do die, and you're dying, honey, what are you going to find when you make that? Somebody all talking about like, where they crossed over the river. And I understand that saying, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But what are you going to find when you cross over that river? When you get over there when, when, and you stand before God, whatever it is, ladies and gentlemen, that you find, whatever it is that God has there on His big book, if that's the way it's going to be, I don't know. I, I don't think God needs a book. Whatever it is that comes your direction, when you do make that crossover, you're just going to have to deal with it. Because there ain't no to-do-overs. If I could do it over again, you better think about what you need to do over right now. You say, well, I used to be in church. Well, I'm going to tell you what you better do. You better think about it right now. You don't need to wait till you step over that crossing or, or step over that river or, or whatever it is you're going to step over. You better make sure right now that when you do make that crossover, you're going to find Jesus standing there welcoming you and asking you to come in by good and faithful service. Amen. So we know that we are a dying race. We may as well face the truth. We won't be here forever. They're dying. You know, man, I got, oh, I got plumbed this plant and I got plumbed. What's the word, sister? I, 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 I have buried four of my best friends that were pastors. Kind of calculating, you know. I don't have all those calculators on all these kids have got. I just have to do it this way. <laughs> when it gets to one, then I have to shoot them. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm thinking about four, I believe it's four ministers that I was closely associated with that I preached three of them's funerals just recently, within the last couple of three years. I thought you said it was recently. Honey, you talk about life or death. That's recent. We want to live forever. I do. I'm going to. Because Jesus already conquered death. He already was already resurrected. Death couldn't hold him. Death couldn't do nothing with him. So if we only knew 
if we only knew just how short life really is. I read a story about a woman that got on an airplane and she sat down by a window and she adjusted the, the, the uh, vents uh, and, she, and she adjusted the place where you, 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 she put her luggage or carry-on bag up top and she took her hat and she got everything. She adjusted her seat. And, and she was adjusting everything. And she had the little ear honked and you listened to the music. She got all of that adjusted just right. And the stewardess come by and said, Ma'am, need to buckle your seat back. We're, we're arriving at your destination. And she said, If I had known the trip was so short, I would not have sweated the small stuff. <laughs> If we only knew how short life really is. Right. The Bible said a man's appointed days is three score years and ten. By reason of strength, four score. That's 80 years, y'all. And that's a very short. This is not a dress rehearsal. It's a short story. A short life. And if we only knew exactly the length we would quit wasting our time on the small stuff. If we really knew how short life really is, I wouldn't sweat the small stuff. Life is short. It's sweet and it's short. And I only hope, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell this audience something. I only hope is not in our government. It's not in Congress. It's not in our physicians. It's, it, the only hope we have is in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Amen. eternal. Nothing temporal. Everything. The eternal. Where will I be in eternity? So it's short. The psalmist said, teach us to number our days, O Lord. Psalms 90 and verse 12 that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. If I just knew, if I just knew, at my age right now, just a pup, old pup or a pup, if I just knew, see, I, I have to count my days. If I just knew how many days I had left, if I knew I had 20 years left, which ain't likely, Lord, if I got 20 years left, y'all gonna have to help me. <laughs> if I just knew exactly, then I could make some preparations. If I knew I had another 8 or 10 or 12 years, I'd go buy me a new pickup. <laughs> what I want with a new pickup if I'm gonna die next year. You understand what I'm saying? If I only knew, if I, if I could just i got to understand, according to the Scripture, everybody's going through the valley of death one day. We're going to all, sooner or later, we're going to face it. The question is, how am I going to face it? What's the preacher going to say about me when he's standing there in front of my family and, and my, my grandchildren and saying, why my papa? Why did God take my papa? What's the preacher going to say? What's his answer going to be? I'm going to tell you. I want the preacher to be able to say, your papa lived for God with all of his heart. Yes, yes. I know this is a tough sermon on Easter. In the face of death, if, if we, when, if we're unprepared, to face death what comes our way and, and what happens on that day we need to be wise today we need to think today there's not a barbarian in here today every one of you all I've seen you just about everywhere I know just about who you are and what you are and there's no reason for anybody to leave here today with any question in their mind Anything at all. The wise thing to do to make sure 
that I'm, when I stand at that day, when I cross that river, when, when, I, when I breathe my last breath, when I play my last song, when I preach my last sermon, the thing I need to be wise enough to do today is make sure that I'm ready when Jesus comes and He's coming. Amen. He's coming. Amen. At this particular time, it's, it's crucial to make sure that we're ready. Jesus said, I'm he that never and was dead. And behold, I'm alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. Now listen carefully to me. Every time I leave my house, I don't care if I'm going out to get on the line. When I leave my house, I carry my keys. When somebody borrows my keys, I say, you make sure you bring me back my keys. I tell my wife, when she's got a house, I say, you don't lay my keys down. Bring them back to me. Those are my keys. I function. I got a key to everything. Somebody come up to me one day and said, Preacher, you got a key to something. I said, what do you think? If it's a lock, I got a key to it. I can count you keys. I got a, my key to my shop. I got a key that goes in out of my garage into my house. I got a key to the front door. I got a key to that door. I got a key to every door. I got keys to doors. I don't even know that we still got the door. I got, I got a rod of key. You know, uh, listen, you know why? You know why I got a key? You know what? You know what that key does for me? You know what that key? That key allows me to go to places where I'm welcome to go. I got a key to all my kids' house. They got a key to my house. I can go and, and I can. I have to fish through them, uh, but I can go find a key. I can open one of my girls' houses and go in, except for Joe and Wanda, and that's coming. I'm gonna get one of them. You know why? Because I'm welcome there. I give them keys to my house, Brother Jeff, because they're welcome. They don't have to call me and say, can I come over? They got a key. Right. The keys give you entry to places that you're welcome to go. Jesus said, I got the keys of death and hell, and Peter had the keys on the day of Pentecost to open up the plan of salvation that she preached about. Right. Right. Jesus, I give unto thee the keys to the kingdom. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Jesus has got the keys of death and hell. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying all you got to do is make sure you get plugged up to Jesus Christ because he's already got the keys. He's already paid the price He's already died and was resurrected and ascended back to heaven. He's already. He's got the keys. Whoso has the keys has the authority. I don't worry about the police coming by and saying, Bank where you live, what are you doing going in? I got a key, dumb dumb. That gives me the authority. Joel Chesser or Michelle Chesser or Rebecca, or Ernie, or Sherry, or Dwayne, or Joe, or Wanda has given me the authority. I can go in when I get ready to go in. Right. Jesus has already given me the authority. I've already got God on my side. I've already repented of my sins. I've already been baptized in His name. And I'm going to tell you, when Jesus Christ, on that first Easter morning, when the sun woke up the earth, and Jesus Christ come walking out of that tomb, He had the keys of death and hell and the grave. He conquered the grave. He conquered the dead. And I don't have nothing to worry about. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. They got this, they had this story. In fact, it was in the scripture. Pilate told them, I believe it was Pilate told them to go secure the tomb and make sure nobody steals it. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Nobody stole it. And it wasn't because of a sealed tomb. It was because Jesus Christ was resurrected by the power of God. I can tell you no robber went in there and got him. The disciples never got him. I know just on a carnal view that I know better than that. 
and I'm, I, and I'm just an old cowboy. I'm just an old boy Ray, born and raised in Cotton Lake Bottom. And I got enough sense to know that. What robber would have went in there, unwrapped his body? You're going to steal the body anyway. Why don't you just take it home? They unwrapped his body. And of all things, had enough nerve to fold all the clothing up and lay it in the <laughs> You tell me what go-go robber would have done. He wasn't robbed. He was resurrected. The earth had to break open the tomb. My Bible tells me. And it wasn't to break it open and let Jesus out. Jesus was accustomed to going through lot doors. He, they didn't have to move the rock to let him out. The rock had to move to let them in. They couldn't get in. Jesus opened, went right through uh, closed doors and locked doors. Up, and he went right out of their sight. Just walked right out of the midst of them. And they didn't even see him. So that wasn't it at all. Nobody can explain the resurrection. You can't explain it. How does one get resurrected? Listen, but I read that this is going to be so funny. I love to tell funny stuff. It keeps you from going to sleep. Listen, I read. This, I, true story. Well, it, it's a true story. I read. It. <laughs> Where cinnamon and ginseng can prolong the life, you ready, of a worm. <laughs> really? I read that. But they don't know, the scientists, the, the professors, they don't know that if an apple can add to a human lifespan, but they can pro prolong the life of a worm. The story said over 2,000 years later, we're feeding cinnamon and ginseng to worms, hoping, hoping that somehow we can use it to help humans live longer. Now, I can tell you all kinds of stupidity in this, but I want to get to the main part of the stupidity. Don't the professor know when I eat an apple, I don't eat the worm? How <laughs> can prolong my life unless I eat the worm? Don't that, that make sense? That's less than high school education. And the professors could, but no one has an answer to that. No one can, nobody can pro, doctors can put tubes in you. And they can put machines on you, and they can put the, those uh, uh, life uh, support things down your throat, and they can keep the machine beeping, beep beep, beep beep. But that machine is what's living in you. They cannot prolong life. They can make you breathe, but they can't prolong your life. They can help you. I'm not even denying that. If I ever get down that bad, let them put a machine on. <laughs> At least I'm bad. Well, they're not a prolong in my life. Doctors can't save me. <coughs> a friend of mine was a timber cutter. Brother Rogers, will you? Are you there? Bro, yo, there you are. Hey, look here. He's a timber cutter. He had handles on a trailer truck way up in the bottom in Houston, Mississippi. Him and his two sons and the truck driver was the only one left there. And one of the handles was stuck out about so far past them. The other, and he told his sons, son, hand me that chainsaw. He handed him the chainsaw and he cranked it and reached up to cut that handle off and it hung and kicked back and cut him right across there and he did in less than a minute. Boys got all shook, of course. And Dr. Tone said, son, said, they blamed themselves not getting him out of that bottom in time. But he, that doctor said, son, you don't need to blame yourself. If I'd been standing there with a team of surgeons, we couldn't have saved that man's life. Doctors can't prolong death. Doctors can't take my life and make me something that God don't want me to be. Scientists can't do it. Honey, let me tell you, sooner or later, we're going to kick the bucket. Death is going to happen. 
Nobody, scientists can't do it. The, the, the uh, government sure can't do it. The gospel is the only thing that's going to help us. The dead, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And he resurrected. He came out of the tomb. He had the keys of death and hell. And he's alive and well today. The message I preach makes me not afraid to die. I'm not afraid. To, I don't want to die. I don't want to leave my children, my grandkids, my wife, my family. I don't want to leave you, this church. Lord, I, don't, I, I want to stay around another hundred years. It ain't likely. It's, it's going to happen. I'm not afraid of it. You know why I'm not afraid to die, Jimmy Crump? Because I ain't going to be dead long. That's why Jesus didn't need that tomb. He, he borrowed that tomb. He said, I won't need it for about three days. Just let me borrow it. I'm not going. I'm not going to stay dead long. I'm going to be resurrected. Why? Why are you saying that, Pastor? I'm saying that because Jesus Christ has got the keys of death, hell, and the grave. Yes, right. And I'm living for Jesus Christ. I know I'm a dying man, just like I know you're a dying man. I'm living on a dying planet, surrounded by dying people. But we got a Savior. Oh, what a Savior! Oh, what, is there any hope? Is there any answer to death? The only answer to death. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I'm going to tell you, it's in the power of Jesus Christ. The only answer, the only hope we have, the only hope I have, is in the name of Jesus Christ. The only... Oh, 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 oh. And on this first Easter, this day we call Easter, I don't know if this is the day he was resurrected or not, it's the day we celebrate. He came out of the grave having defeated the devil and broke down the power of death holding the keys to death hell and the grave remember, remember, we will die young people, you will just cause you don't have any gray hair all that stuff right now you will you live long enough, you'll die you're gonna die sooner or later as they say just a little saying We'll all do some box time. It's coming. The thing of it is, what's going to happen when it comes? The only hope you have is in Jesus Christ. Your buddies ain't going to do it. Your beer drinking buddies ain't going to do it. Your smoking buddies ain't going to do it. Everybody will give an account. The church doesn't depend on men. This church is not built on men. It's built upon a rock. And hell can't prevail against the church. Is built upon the power and the promises of Jesus Christ. So am I getting ready to close? Check. Uh, Rebecca, where are you at, sweetie? You're the one I'm looking for. Come on, baby. Come on up here and play for me. Play for that. I want you to play something. Who, who, who will be ready when that day comes? It's not, is that day coming? It's coming. It's coming. It's coming for, for all of us. So the answer, I've given you the answer. Our hope, our answer, is in the power of God. Death has been defeated. Jesus defeated death at Calvary. He rose from the dead. And one day he's returning to catch a church away. So I'm going to, take, I'm going to say this to the children of God as you're standing. I'm going to say this to all the children of God today. Rejoice. The Lord's coming. Jesus is alive. He's not dead. He's alive. Pray with me, would you? Let's pray, Father. Thank you today, Lord. Thank you today. I appreciate you, Lord. I appreciate you. Bless your children today. Bless your children. Now just lift your hands right where you're standing if you want to pray. If you want to talk to them, just lift your hands and talk to them. In the name of Jesus. What a beautiful name. What a beautiful what name. A beautiful name. The name of Jesus what a wonderful name. Christ, my Thank you. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. Praise the Lord.
God bless you. You can be seated.